really? <laughs> Can you kind of mess with it and let some air out? Or? I will wait. All right, everybody. I'm going to give you a minute if you need it to get to Romans chapter 12. Is that a good one, honey? Yeah. He likes Romans. Yeah, that's true. All things Romans. That good up. Is it okay? Six, you know what that deals with. Mm -hmm. Stroll six. Mm -hmm. Personal responsibility. You ready? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Romans 12. <clears throat> Spoken by the Apostle Paul. I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So in 1 Corinthians 6, verses 19 through 20, um, the Apostle Paul asks, or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own. You were bought with a price. And we all know that that price was Jesus Christ, who came here and who died a brutal death for each one of us that we could have eternal life. And if we live like this, understanding that the Holy Spirit is within us, we won't want to do things that are detestable to God. Once we are born again into a new life, a life where we are led by Jesus, we should all be striving to be like Jesus. And we should avoid striving to be like the king of this world, who is Satan, who would encourage us to be greedy, living for ourselves and our own pleasure, putting ourselves first. And isn't that the message that the world gives us? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we shouldn't take that to heart. We need to remember who our true father is. And we need to live for our father and not for ourselves. Verse three. For I say, though the grace given through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. So we know that no one, not one person, is or could be saved by their own works, by their own good deeds. Nobody could do enough good deeds, not by a long shot. Everybody here and each one of us is saved solely by the grace of God. And it's what he would love to give to everyone, every Muslim, every Jew, every follower of the other gods. He would love for them to come to him and be saved. So we're not alone in that he only loves us. He loves everybody. and He wants that everybody should be saved. Verse four. For as much, for as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function. So we being many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, let us use them. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith or ministry. Let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence. He who shows mercy with cheerfulness. We should all, every single one of us, serve. We are the church. We all together, we make up the church. We, everybody here has different gifts, which we can use and we should use to serve God. Mm -hmm. There's a parable that Jesus uses. And he said, you know, he, to those who he gives much, he expects much. To those that he gives little, well, he doesn't expect as much. So for whatever he gave you, he expects you to give back. So if he gave you a big talent to help other people, then help other people. <laughs> if he gave you a big talent to be generous and kind, then do that with all your heart, right? So remembering that we're all the church and we make up this literal, think of it as a literal body. 
I'm the foot. I help you walk around. Tom's the hand. He helps to grab things. Ashley is the head. She makes the choices. When any member is not doing their part, if I don't do my part, we're going to fall over. <laughs> and the body doesn't function so well, right? If Tom doesn't do his part, we won't be able to grab things. And Ashley, God knows you need to do your part if you're our head, right? <laughs> so we need to all remember this and we need to work as one to bring the gospel to others and to serve our fellow man. Verse nine, let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil, cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love in honor, giving preference to one another not lagging in diligence, fevering in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer, distributing to the needs of the saints, given to hospitality. If we did all these things, we would draw people to our churches like bees to flowers. We need to make serious efforts to serve just like Jesus did. And we need to do so joyously, knowing that we're honoring God when we do that. Verse 14, bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Okay, now... One thing that is really hard for most of us is to bless those who persecute us. When we are persecuted, and Fernando saw me do this today, I was so irritated, and I did not come across very Christian-like. But um, you know, I corrected myself. We need to make sure that we pray for people that are persecuting us. I mean, they need our blessings more than anybody, and we need to be there for our friends and rejoice when they're happy and be there, cry when they need to cry. And don't set our minds on high things. So don't, don't try to be like social climbing and be up there and hanging out with the mayor, but associate with the humble, associate with each other. And don't think highly of yourself. Don't be like, I'm all that. <laughs> so we, we really need to concentrate on being there for our sisters and our brothers when they're in need. And a lot of times we fail to do this because we're busy, because we're doing other things. And it's easy to neglect our brothers and sisters. But when we lend an ear, we need to listen more than to advise and understand that nobody, not one, not anybody on this earth is better than anyone else, regardless of their social standing or their position in the church. We shouldn't be tooting our own horns. God will honor us when we do good in his name, and he will heap up for us riches in heaven. Verse 17, repay no one evil for evil. And that's hard for us too. have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peaceably with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. And that comes from Deuteronomy 32, verse 35 where the Lord says, vengeance is mine and recompense. Their foot shall slip in due time for the day of their calamity is at hand and the things to come hasten upon them. So he's got to get to the people that need to be gotten to. We needn't worry about that. We could never do the vengeance as good as God can anyhow. Right. <laughs> right. And then um, the apostle says, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. So here Paul is quoting from Proverbs 25, verses 21 through 22. If your enemy is hungry, give him bread to eat. And if he's thirsty, give him water to drink. For so you will heap coals of fire on his head. And the Lord will reward you. So we need to remember this, and it, it can be really hard for us to do. We, the last person that we want to lend a hand to is somebody who has done us wrong or talked wickedly about us or who we think isn't following God's path. 
But in doing good for them, we might draw them to, to Jesus. We might, we might help turn them around. We might have them see the mercy of God and come to the Lord and spare them a life of eternal life of, of weeping and gnashing of teeth in hell. And we shouldn't want that for anybody. And finally, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And in that, <laughs> I love that. In that final statement, Paul's just, he's summing it up. It's like, if we just are, just don't allow the evil of this world to overcome us and to taint us and to, to make us do wickedly or think wickedly or, or be lazy about helping, but be overcome, but overcome evil with good. And we do all those things to be like our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If we serve our brother if we humbly love each other, if we are constantly in prayer, if we're doing good, I mean, that that's kind of the sum, the summation of it all in this chapter. So, okay. So it's kind of a short chapter, but there's tons to it. Now, who would like to share? I'll just Can I just it. say something about 12, Absolutely. 6, 8, 6, 8. <laughs> it's really, really a statement. And it's about all the gifts that everybody has everybody has different gifts and it takes all of these gifts to make christ church but i thought it was interesting when they say an assertive past uh, prophet would not usually make a good counselor and a generous giver might fail as a leader <laughs> so so it takes all kinds and we're going to fail at some things obviously so it's kind of interesting it, it's, it takes everybody i love that bill that's a great way of looking at it well it's it's it makes a point, doesn't it? <laughs> it sure does. Thank you. I kind of like the verses um, 17 to 21. And in, um, these verses summarize the core of Christian living. Um, if we love someone in the way Christ loves us, we will be willing to forgive. If we have experienced God's grace, we will want to, to pass it on to others and remember grace is understanding favor by giving an enemy a drink we're not excusing his misdeeds we are recognizing him forgiving him and loving him in spite of his sin just as jesus did for us so. thank you, thank you. Yeah, you know, I, I think of uh, Joseph in Egypt, and remember he he'd risen. His brothers sold him into slavery when he was a kid. They hated him uh, because he was Dad's favorite and that uh, Jacob's favorite. And so they they had that coat of many colors that his father had given him to distinguish him as the favorite. And so they caught him out in the field one day, and and they, they took off his coat and faked his death. And threw him in a, in a well where some Egyptians found him and took him into slavery. And uh, I think his little brother, anyway, that's a long story. But he rose, he went in as a slave. Then he wound up in prison because he was falsely accused of trying to make time with, with, uh, with uh, his Potiphar's wife which he didn't do, but she falsely accused him. He went to prison. And then he gets this, gets this reputation in prison for being able to interpret dreams. And then finally, Pharaoh has a dream that's troubling him so bad. And so uh, uh, they, between the baker and the, who was the baker and the... And the cupbearer. Cup yeah, and so that word finally gets... <laughs> The guy didn't even say anything. He knew about Joseph, but he didn't say anything to Pharaoh because he was afraid he might lose his life if it didn't go well. But eventually, uh, Pharaoh, uh, Joseph winds up interpreting Pharaoh's dream for him. And Pharaoh is so impressed and raises him to second in power over all of Egypt. Then the, his, his brothers and his father, who had sold him into slavery, come down to Egypt because they're starving during a famine in, uh, in uh, Israel, and they come down to Egypt to get some grain, and uh, he gets his brothers off to the side and reveals himself to them. 
And uh, they, you know, of course, they were just like struck to the quick over what they did. And the words he said to them, you meant it for for harm, but God meant it for good. In other words, it's a perfect story about how if we'll follow along with what we're being told here, if we give up, we'll give it to God, <clears throat> instead of trying to get even with somebody, give it to God and just be joyful and prayerful and thankful. Uh, for that's the will of God, according to Second Thessalonians. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's the will of God in Christ Jesus for our lives. Anyway, if we'll just continue on doing right things and all that, it'll come around full circle and God will see to it that you are uh, that you are rectified, that you are uh, and he did with Joseph so beautifully. And there's other stories in the Bible like that, too. If we can just have a little self-control and trust, trust God in things. Mm -hmm. When Evel was in the hospital, they did a whole bunch of things. Were not according to Hoyle. I was reading all the literature, what they're supposed to be doing, and they were dropping the ball all the time. But God saw her through all that in spite of those things. And, and I'm so glad that he helped me keep my cool. I never got angry with anybody or anything, but it was tough to keep my mouth shut sometimes. But that's what we got to do. We got to show a little self-control and compassion and trust God that he's going to see us through whatever happens to us. If we, if we fail. Sorry. That was a lot, huh? <laughs> Yeah. Lou, did you have anything? Uh -huh. uh, no, it, it reminded me very much of, of when I went to uh, Jan's memorial at the at, at the University at Merced where she taught. I had not seen my granddaughter for about, oh, probably 10 years. I'd spoken to her over the phone because she lived with her mother, but... Um, I felt like we were estranged in a way because we just didn't communicate. And she was so happy to see me there. It, I don't know how to explain it. It just was like a whole new child that, <laughs> that I thought I'd lost. And uh, it was a sad occasion, but it was a, a really wonderful occasion too. And uh, I've, I've kept in correspondence with her since then. Thank God. That's beautiful, Lou. Yeah. Thank you. Amazing. God, he is. <laughs> yeah. Ashley, did you have anything? I do not. Very well. Thank you. Fernando? I do not. <laughs> sorry i was talk. i was i feel like i'm at work i was talking to myself on mute <laughs> i'm like oh what we sorry. do that a lot would um, anybody like to pray us out <laughs> pastor tom we haven't heard from pastor tom he does a good oh, job yeah. there we, we go need, we need that Lord, we thank you that Avery does a, such a good job on this Bible study. Mm -hmm. And thank you that it's growing. And there's new faces. And, or new pictures. Mm -hmm. <laughs> new names. And Lord, we thank you for that. And uh, uh, we thank you that Avery does such a wonderful job. Thank you for the scripture that we uh, looked at today. And we, help, we pray, hope and pray, Father, that we can get it down deep in our hearts. And that it'll help us to be better disciples for you. And uh, Lord, we thank you for Avery. We thank you for all these good people that have, the faithful people who have come tonight. And uh, we just pray that you bless each and every household represented here. In Jesus' precious name, amen. 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 Thank you, Tom. Thank you so much. Thank you. Pastor, thank you.